Ruth said to me, do an advent calendar. I'm not doing an advent calendar. Melt some chocolate down, put it into a piece of cardboard. No, 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 no. to Amuse Bouche, we are still in the professional kitchen. I thought, why not, if we're in professional surroundings, try and do a Can I Make It? And I wanted to do a Christmas theme Can I Make It? What I did decide on was these, the Marks and Spencers uh, Santa Yum Nuts. Yummy, 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 yum nuts. This is a yum nut. They're derived from a recipe that became quite popular in New York, the crow nut. Developed by a chef called Dominique Ancel. What M&S have done is not been able to use the name Krona, so they've taken the name Yum Nuts. I'm gonna cut it open so we can have a little look inside. Look at the size of that. Whee! That's a big old chef's knife. What you can see here, ladies and gentlemen, is a lot of layers, okay? It's like a croissant. It's got all those layers. It's covered in sugar, and it's very clearly been deep fried. Let's give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a bit naughty. That's a little bit naughty. I would say it is quite doughy, which I didn't actually expect. We're gonna give these a go. We're gonna make almost like a croissant dough. We're gonna prove it. We're gonna laminate it. Oh, they're filling a bud. The layers. We'll make up some icing. If I can get icing that red without using my own blood, then, you know, God bless me, in a way. m and Santa Yum Nuts. Let's get to it. This is a little bit trickier than the mince pies the other week, so bear with me. First up, let's combine our dry ingredients. 250 grams of plain flour and 250 grams of bread flour. Into that bowl also goes 12 grams of salt and 40 grams of caster sugar. Give them a little whisk together so that they're all combined. Then into the stand mixer, we're going in with wet two egg whites, and a combination of 110 grams of warm water and 80 grams of warm milk, with two packets of yeast added to that. Follow this up with all the dry ingredients and then get over to your industrial level mixer. Now this thing costs like two grand, so I'm not expecting everyone to have one, but it's a bit of fun, isn't it? Let all the ingredients combine in the mixer for a couple of minutes before slowly adding 100 grams of cubed up butter. Let the mixer combine the dough and the butter until you have a lovely soft, supple number on your hands. Now, you could leave it in there with a dough hook and let it do its thing for six or seven minutes, but there wasn't a dough hook in sight. See, not all fun and games, is it, in the professional kitchen? Anyway, once the doughs come together, you can turn it out into a lightly floured surface and knead away for the previously stated time. To be honest, I genuinely found this so much easier just having had the dough worked in the mixer for a few minutes. Next up, like any good dough, this needs to prove itself. Prove itself worthy. Stick it in an oiled bowl and cover with a piece of oiled cling film and then it needs to prove until it's doubled in size. Now for me, I've got the advantage of this fancy oven. It does everything, including proving. But for you, maybe just leave it in a warm spot in the kitchen for an hour, 90 minutes and you'll be fine. Once it's doubled in size, we're gonna knock it all back again. Shatter its confidence a little. We're then gonna wrap it up in a piece of new cling film and stick it in the freezer for about 15 minutes. This will just halt the proving for a little while while we laminate. Bring it back out and then we're gonna roll out the dough. You wanna get it to about half an inch thick and a rectangle that's about 60 by 30 centimeters. Next, I've just had a 125 gram block of butter sitting next to the warm oven in the kitchen and it's softened it all. Give it a mix in the saucepan just to make sure it's malleable and then we're gonna spread it out onto the sheet of dough. It's not a very French way of doing it, this. They use a chilled slab of butter, but as Girls Aloud once said, I can't speak French, so I'll let the funky music do the talking. There's nothing Girls Aloud love more than a bit of bacon. I enjoy cooking yeah. bacon and stop working with flour. Anyway, what we're gonna do once we've covered the sheet of dough in butter is give it a letter fold. Fold one third across the other and then the final third over the first. You know, that might not make sense, but just watch and you'll get an idea. You know, it didn't make sense reading it, to be honest. It's basically gonna be like an envelope of butter. This can be wrapped back up and put in the fridge for an hour or so until the butter's all firmed up. Once it's had its hour, it can come back out, be rolled out again to the same size as before, and then once again, we're gonna do that letter fold and then it's gonna go back in the fridge. 
do this one more time and then that's three turns, equaling 27 layers of dough and butter. And how did I work that out? Just, I, yeah, I just Googled it, to be honest. I just Googled it. After all those turns, the dough needs a bit of time to feed the yeast. We're gonna do a long, slow prove, leaving it in the fridge overnight to do its thing. And the next day, it'll come out looking like this. A lovely little pillow. We're gonna roll it out, not as big as before, but big enough that we can get eight circles out of it. Remove any of the excess dough, but don't throw that dough away. Make a little cuttings of it and you know, prove it with the rest of the stuff and deep fry it and ice and sugar on it. It's great. Anyway, using the smaller circle, I'm using the end of a piping bag here, which is depressing. You're gonna cut out a center circle to make it look like a ring donut. Put each of the cronuts onto a square piece of baking paper. This will make life so much easier later on. Then they're gonna need another prove. So they're going back into the fancy proving oven. But again, if you just keep them somewhere warm in the kitchen for 90 minutes until they've doubled in size, that'll be fine. While they're proving, we're gonna sort out our decoration. Into a bowl goes 150 grams of icing sugar, half a teaspoon of red food coloring, and then just a dribble of water, probably about a tablespoon. Start this off by whisking it, and then when it comes together, you can adjust your levels as you need to. Add a few more drops of water. If it gets too wet, then add a tablespoon of icing sugar and food coloring. You basically want it to be the same sort of consistency as yogurt. You want a nice dark red color like Santa's big old coat, which was traditionally green. Thanks to Coca-Cola for that one. In another bowl, we're gonna combine 200 grams of caster sugar and a teaspoon of cinnamon, which we're gonna roll the cronuts in as soon as they come out of the fryer. Speaking of which, now I'm Again, using the professional kitchen, so why not use the fryer? But you could also fill a heavy bottom pan about half full of cooking oil and it'll do the same job. I'm just gonna do this one on its own to start with, but you could do a couple at a time. Plop them into the oil safely and then give them 90 seconds each side to cook. They should be a sort of golden browny color when they're done. After the three minutes, straight out of the oil and into the sugar and cinnamon mixture. Roll it around like a little sparrow in a dust bath. You know, I'm typing that and I'm realizing that it's not a common saying. So, you know, just roll it around basically until it's all covered in the sugar. Once covered, we'll move to our next decoration station, the red icing. Now I'm going with the dip theory. Gently dip the krona into the icing, give it a slight turn just so that it covers the whole top of the pastry. Flip it back up and put it on some kitchen roll or a cooling rack just to let any excess oil run off. And there you have it, an M&S Santa Yum Nut. And I'm gonna be gobbling on Santa's Yum Nut for days. Oh, no, hang on, no. So there we go. There's your Santa Yum Nut. That's Ruth Peterson, married, so therefore in a bubble. We made these yum nuts. I've brought Ruth in to have a little try. What are you excited about with this? The dough. She's excited about the dough. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you know what I like about you in this? You're just using the space. You're just sort of wandering around the shop. No, no, little, very Actor. little control. Actor. The M&S one. Have a little try of that. How was that M&S one? Hang on. It was nice. Yeah? It was maybe a bit dry, a bit uh, dense. Bang for your buck. Yeah. yeah sure, have that. Have that. Merry yeah. Christmas. Have a little try of my one now. Like a springy, um, slinky. I'm just going to like a slinky. Did you do a, a thing of both? Do you together? want to do that now? This is M&S. Okay. This is Moose Bouche. Yeah. There's a little bit too much of the sugar in, on the outside. That's not a bad thing for me. You like a bit of sugar on the outside, mm. don't you? There's lots of yeah. nice layers in there. Crunchy, it is crunchy, yeah. isn't it? There's a crunchy outside, yeah, but it's not, and nice and soft in the middle. Mm. That croissant -y type feel. Fluffy and bouncy. Fluffy and bouncy. Can I make it? Yeah. I think I can make <laughs> it, actually. Do you make it at home without the proven oven? Could I? Listen, it takes a lot of work, it's a lot of laminating, it's a lot of, and you found that out, didn't you, when you did your almond croissants? If you want just an almond croissant recipe, uh, hit this link. some good food or mm. something like that. No? If you're gonna make these yum nuts, then take a picture, post it on Instagram. You're just in and out, it's mental. It's, uh, this is the sort of anarchy that I'm dealing with now in this amuse-bouche. Ruth just in and out, she just doesn't give a shit. 
like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, give these yum nuts a go, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas. It's mental. Because the thing is, you want to be in it, but then you just don't say anything. You just go quiet on me. <laughs>